morning, little Cashwell. Welcome to Cashwell Storytime. And I am here with Ariana, and I am going to read A Nation's Hope, the story of boxing legend Joe Lewis, illustrated by Kadir Nelson and written by Della Pena. Yankee Stadium, 1938. Packed crowd buzzing in bets, battered back and forth. The Bronx night air thick with summer. The world waits for Joe Lewis to take the ring. Take center stage. White men wait standing beside black men, but standing apart. But Jim Crow America. Yankee Stadium, Wednesday, June 2nd, 1938. 8.15 p.m. All to witness the most important match in boxing history. Soft-spoken Joe Lewis against the one man who put him on his back, Max Smelly. But Joe knows tonight's fight is bigger than any two men, son of a black sharecropper against a Hitler's master race, black and white America, together against the rule of Nazi hate. The weight of history hangs on Joe's shoulders and he ducks through ropes. Body already glazed with warm-up sweats. Will he come from come through for his country? The German Max Mellon enters second. Both boxers dancing in the in their corners. Shadow box jabs caught in flash of cameras. The referee calls the two to center ring. Biggest stage ever. He shouts out the crowd. May the best man win, he shouts. The bell dings. And the two men raise fists, come together, uh, come together under a defending roar. But the crowd didn't always roar for Joe Lewis. He didn't speak until he was six. And when he finally spoke, he stammered and was ridiculed. Words spinning just beyond Joe's grasp. And with black skin, he passed through childhood in shadows. Yet there was something about his hands, so big and powerful, nights he stared down at those hands and dreamed. Joe's mom said it was music, and one morning sent him out with gathered change for a violin lesson. Joe ducked inside a gym instead, spied men twice his age and size pounding heavy bags and skipping rope. He returned day after day, slowly stepping out from shadows, first time inside a ring as an amateur, though his opponent was a blur of fists and footwork, sent Joe tumbling to the canvas seven times. Bruised jaw and bruised ego, but Joe came back. He watched older boxers spar and listen and grew into his body. The space between ropes became home. The dance of the fight, two men circling, shuffling, a dedicated balance, movement based on the other guy's eyes. Back then, blacks didn't win decisions, not against whites. Joe had to let his fists be the referees. In his first professional fight, he knocked a man clear out of the ring but in victory, Joe didn't raise his gloves and gloat. He held opponents to their feet and shook their hands. More knockouts followed. Each new city, another fallen man, his legend quickly spread across the country. People scrambling for a glance of Joe in a cab or coming from a cafe. Black neighborhoods longing for a hero to call their own found Joe and danced his every triumph in the streets, hundreds surrounding Joe and his wife down a Harlem sidewalk. Joe smiling, always humble, having back with those powerful hands, once a bo boyhood dream, now a people's hope. But at the height of Joe's fame, Hitler's German caught him with his gloves down and Joe woke up on his back. Devastated, he covered his face, leaving the ring, shadows once again falling, and the taste of failure, Harlem Street struck silent. 
He healed and vowed to battle back. He worked even harder as the world threatened war around him. Word leaked that the Nazis were filling concentration camps in Europe just as Joe got another shot at the German. It was now more than just blacks who needed a hero. It was all of America and color was set aside. 70,000 erupt as Joe leaks from his corner at the bell, an entire stadium leaning onto the toes and holding his breath. Ears glued to radio. In every home, in every city, the entire world stopping its fate seemingly all in Joe's hand. Instead of waiting this time, Joe is first to strike. He jabs and retreats and jabs again, his gloves never dropping in an inch. He stings the German with an overhand right and the crowd goes crazy. But Joe hears nothing. He strikes again, send the German down. Soon as the German is up, Joe is on him again, a relentless fury of gloves and passion. Shadows disappearing. The German goes down again and again until his corner man throws in the white towel and the referee waves Joe away. Just like that, it's over. Joe has shocked the world, the entire stadium in pandemonium. White men hugging black men and black men hugging back. The streets of Harlem once again dancing for their hero. But all of America dancing this time.